Okay, so this is a uh, this is just going to be a video of uh, me throwing. Um, so oftentimes, 99% um, of the time on Instagram and a lot of other places, uh, including my sites and especially like even on uh, the YouTube video, YouTube channel, <laughs> um, everything's in this hyper this hyper speed, uh, you know, to meet the game show format that is Instagram of one minute. So, um, and the attention span of the modern American. Um, so, um, I'm just gonna be throwing in real time here. Uh, might go close to an hour, I don't know. Um, uh, I need to make some tea bowls. And so, uh, for those of you watching this, this is a live, uh, video that I'm doing on Instagram and it'll be uploaded to my YouTube channel and so if it's not live it's because you're watching me on the YouTube channel thanks for um, thanks for watching <laughs> okay so um, <clears throat> I'm just gonna get started and I kind of barely got here this morning hold on a second I barely got here this morning, okay? So this is, uh, I am not in my home studio. I'm in my tiny studio at the gallery. My home studio doesn't have a, uh, it, it, like I get one little freckle, okay? One, the, the you know, the bars, I, it sometimes one little dot will show up and uh, I can't, I can't stream anything there. So I've created this little tiny studio here in my gallery. What it is is uh, at the gallery we also have a, a, a clothing boutique. Um, about oh, about a third of it is clothes, and my wife's my wife's into clothes. Okay, so she's we did that, and uh, I built two dressing rooms, and they don't get used a ton. So I made one of the dressing rooms into my tiny studio. And when I say tiny studio, I'm being serious. It's, uh, if I get up and walk out of here, I gotta do it sideways and um, just kinda slide out of here a little bit. So I just kinda set this camera down. I'm not really sure if that's exactly where it should be. It looks like it should be a little lower, so I'm gonna move you. If you get vertigo easily, you could have a problem here. Now, I don't throw left-handed, but for some reason, with all the technology, <laughs> the phone, <laughs> the camera stand is continuing to drop on its own. It must be destiny, fate, ignorance. I'm not sure what, um, but here we are. I can even slide it in a little closer now. Wow, that worked out pretty well. I'm thinking either ignorance or fate is working for me. So, um, yeah, that works. Um, where was I? Barely got here this morning. Bringing up clay and a few tools I knew I would need, things like that. And, oh, I don't throw left-handed, okay? Um, for all the technology in the world, you know, you got in these smartphones and when you're doing a live Instagram video, it shows it backwards. I don't know why. This is my left hand and the wheel is moving the, what I'm gonna call for in America, the traditional direction. But it looks like, um, probably looks the opposite. Anyway, if you watch this in a mirror, I believe it will be correct. I'm starting out just with some simple forms. There's uh, uh, all the clay I have here today is cone 10, and so I'm going to be throwing in a very specific manner because the glazes that I use at cone 10 are mostly ash glazes, fake ash glazes, I should say. And if you're ever curious about those, on my website uh, are the recipes for my ash glazes. I'm planning to put all my recipes on there, and I just haven't got to it yet gotten to it haven't I haven't, I haven't done it yet <laughs> so um, 
but the recipes for my ash glazes, I believe my Timaku, the my cone ten stuff is on there. Um, and uh, so, if you're in, curious about those, you can you can go there and check those out. So, what I was, I guess, I was leading into. Like this is a really simple form, okay? There's not any rocket science going on here. And uh, hello, uh, I can't see who that is from here. Tamara, is that you? <laughs> okay, so um, it's a really simple form here because, like I said, it's all my cone 10. I got cone 10 clay here today. And so um, I will only be using my ash glazes on these. So the, the, I'm not gonna do anything that would be setting myself up for carving. And um, uh, all these balls, it's, this is all B mix, and it's a pound and a quarter of clay. Oh, hello, how you doing, Tamara? Um, it's a uh, it's a pound and a quarter. So I, I like to throw my tea bowls from a pound and a quarter. Um, I find one pound makes a really good drinking vessel, and. Um, I could, uh, in that range, let's say. And so, um, and these will all have a trimmed foot. And if you see me uh, um, coning this clay a lot, it's there's a there's a lump in there and I'm just kind of working on it. I don't know who prepared this clay. It must have been me. There we go. You can really feel, when you're coning clay, can really feel the particle. You can feel it tighten up. It's just good for it. And that first one, that that first, my first pot's never any good. I even know my first pot's never any good. And I shouldn't say never any good. It's my first pot is just okay, you know. And so um, I uh, my screen just went dark. I wonder why that happened. I've never had that happen when I'm doing a. A video that's odd so um, my foot did I didn't set my foot as deeply as I should have and I didn't realize it till I picked it up I'm gonna go a little deeper on that one I find where you set the foot really does uh, create I don't know it kind of it kind of creates the weight of the piece you know what the what the whole thing is setting on helps define what the shoulder is relative to it in my my studio my tiny studio here I'm here next to the window and uh, but it's a cloudy day, and I'm I'm not getting much love from the sun. I found uh, my wife's dad when we were building my studio. He helped me a lot. Like was couldn't have done it without him, um, or maybe I could have, but I'd still be working on it. <laughs> um, he's like Danny, you need to put in lots of light. You're not going to stay young forever, and I'm like, nah, I don't need a lot of light. A couple light bulbs hanging from a wire, and I'll be good. Of course, we did put in a bunch of fluorescent lights, but uh, we should have put in more. <laughs> so, I've, uh, my eyes aren't as good as they used to be, and um, light helps. And for those of you who, have, who haven't experienced this yet, um, all those things that that older people say about what your body does is it gets older that I didn't believe they're right <laughs> so I'm not trying to put that on you but chances are uh, it will happen to you okay that one was better those are just going to be really simple I generally with that form um, I just uh, 
Those will probably have tan ash glaze on them. Um, and the whole thing gets done in tan ash. Super heavy overspray on the inside with the Timaku. And then a slight dip with the lip with the Timaku as well. And uh, the, um, man, my screen went dark again. That's gonna bother me. Um, and then the rutile underneath it. And, uh, and, I, and I load that Timaku up as heavily as I can right at the rim, but like only like a three eighths of an inch maybe. And then I want it to flow just a little bit with the, with the rutile. And so, and then having that nice, it's, uh, well, I'll make another one. So this kind of has a, uh, the fullness of this piece, you know, we always talk about a shoulder and this pot doesn't have a shoulder. It essentially is a straight line right in here in this, in this area right in here. And so the shoulder is here. So I don't know, is that the butt? I don't, I don't know what it is, but it's, uh, the, it gives it, it gives it this, this pot. If, if you were to say, ask someone to describe this pot, it, it feels very round and that's not just looking at it from the top and so um, but yet a lot of it's a straight line but what make, gives it this round feeling is this and so it'll it'll have that ash glaze and then it'll be hard and it'll be dark up here at the top with the Timaku and then it'll start to bleed and hopefully what I try to get is the hair's fur is what I really like and so I found that I'll, I'll go ash glaze and then Ash goes in and out, Timaku heavy overspray on the inside, and then when I also do a dip at the lip that's like about a three-eighths of an inch to really load it up. And and then I overspray that with the rutile and I get slop I make it sloppy up into the Timaku. And all those overlaps in there cause it to just move, but they 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 start to move together. And that's when you get your hairs for um, and, and, and if you're not familiar with what hair's fur is, um, it's when you get, it's kind of a striation of all the glazes. They start to, they start to move um, not just vertically, but laterally within one another. And, and what's going on there is you've got, is you've got uh, clay, uh, clays. You've got glazes of different viscosity flowing. And, and, and some of them, will actually uh, mature at a lower temperature than others and they start to move and that's where it initially starts actually is you've got uh, like if you've got a uh, an interesting thing to do is to take like a like a blue a blue fake a blue ash glaze okay and put it underneath a white just a just a white uh, a, a white shiny glaze and what will happen is, is it'll model because that blue uh, glaze that's underneath it starts to flux first and it starts to move and shake and break up the surface that's centered above it and it's very brittle but it isn't ready to flux yet and so it causes the top surface to crack and, and then pull towards itself with uh, surface tension and so um, you can intentionally make things model that way by putting a uh, a, a primer, your, your first glaze is something that fluxes at a lower temperature than the glaze you put over it. And, uh, and then so, uh, but if you have them in a, in a manner where they can vertically, vertically move uh, down, um, 
and then it hears hers. But not always. <laughs> so. so I'm just kind of messing around here today. I needed to make tea bowls. And I haven't done a live talk on my Instagram site. I was doing them every week. And um, started with Inseca um, when I did it for Inseca. And there was just a lot of really positive response from it. So I just kind of kept going every Saturday. Uh, and then I started my Patreon site. So. I needed to dedicate some time to that as well, and probably will even more so. Uh, that'll probably pick up even more. Hold on a second, I'm shifting. Um, okay, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a couple wavy tea bowls. I bet I had I was <laughs> I was in a groove there, and then I I had to remember what I was doing so I could let my hands just work. Okay, so for tea bowls, is there consideration for containing heat? And um, that's a that is a, a a emphatic question that should can only be answered yes or no. <laughs> and so I don't. Um, uh, let's say that. Most tea bowls are not made with people considering making considerations for heat. Um, to begin with, they're small, and it's a small amount of liquid, and so the th th there's a lot of stuff that I pass on through here that I hear that I didn't like, you know, fact check with uh, do a peer review fact check, okay. So, um, but when it makes sense to me, um, I'm going with it whether or not it's real or not. So, uh, the, the tea drinking culture, I'm not just going to say Japan, okay, because um, it's not just Japan, but this whole concept we have with tea bowls, I think, is very Japanese, although, although it's also very Chinese and Korean and, and, and all that as well. Uh, I guess you could just say Asian. But... Um, I was told that, not really the reason, but a tea bowl doesn't need um, a handle because you sh what they say about drinking tea is you shouldn't put anything in your mouth that you cannot hold in your hand. And so it's kind of a, a way of, of checking whether or not your tea is cool enough to drink yet. Um, if you can pick it up with your hand, if you can't pick it up with your hand, don't put it in your mouth, okay? There's those people that, you know, they drink coffee. I've got coffee here this morning. And yeah, the first couple of sips, <laughs> I can still feel them. They burn a little bit. And so, uh, but I'm using a Yeti <laughs> cup. And so it's cheating, right? I pick it up, it's cool and comfortable. So just slug it down, right? Um, so there, that's, I guess I'm having a conversation about temperature and I'm forgetting to throw pots and um, um, so let's, let's say you can make that a part of your process. Um, the, the smaller and more narrow the opening, generally speaking, it's, it's a kind of a general consensus. Uh, it's probably pretty scientific too that that holds the heat better. Also, you can start to get into the thickness of the of the of the clay of the, the of the piece, and so if you were to put it in, you know, boiling hot, then that that uh, warmth goes into the clay, and um, it allows that it kind of acts as a battery to hold the heat longer if the if the uh, if the wall of the clay is thicker, and then you can actually start to get into um, double walled pieces that are really kind of a novelty more than anything. I, I simply detest 
the sight of usually and even holding a double walled cup because there's two pots there so they're and so so then so then you then you have to back up and and I think in the in a past talk I think it was on a patreon talk actually last week I'm talking about this this scale of function and aesthetics and so if you want this to be hyper functional and do a really good job of, of keeping your tea at the same temperature for a long period of time I feel like you're going to have to give up some a lot actually of, of aesthetics um, because it's going to be heavy so holding it and, and, and using it is going to be um, less pleasant in my opinion and visually speaking it's going to be heavy and so um, it'd be like those it's one of the reasons why the diner cups are as heavy as they are it is it, it, that's twofold as well it makes them very very durable uh, for all kinds of abuse of you know like all the teenage kids and the people that don't care about you know the overhead of the owner just clanking these things around you see them carrying them in those giant bins and they're just throwing them all in there and they survive so they're made heavy in order for that reason but it's also to hold the temperature of people drinking coffee and things like that it's mostly for for keeping them from breaking but they have this secondary uh, value in that way and but it's like a cup of coffee in one of those things is not very much coffee <laughs> it's like to get it small enough that you want to pick it up when it's full it doesn't hold very much so it's i think i think what you first of all it's like there's no right thing or wrong thing to do um if that's if that's if you want to be all about the function and 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 you know keeping your coffee coffee or tea warm for long periods of time then uh, then you can be about that and 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 so like if you're wanting to sell your work what I would be doing then is is like I would be searching out those places where you have the geeks you know the people that are into tea and that, like people that drink matcha and 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 uh, are just are, are totally into the tea the tea ceremony all these things and, and like that are way into coffee and and in what I would call a coffee snob or a tea snob but what that just means is that they care a lot about it and and so um, those are the people that will care about you know how long it holds it generally speaking I'm speaking in general terms okay because there are no absolutes so the setup for this wavy tea bowl I actually learned how to make these from, from big pots. A lot of people, they'll, a lot, me included, they, they, they come up with something and they see it in a small scale and then, you know, over time it can sometimes translate into something much bigger. But I was working on making this pot that, had, that I wanted it to have a waist and I wanted it to have a twist as well in the waist. And I kept doing it by by you know essentially like like taking a piece and uh, 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 the knife the, you know <laughs> the one sole purpose of this curved piece of wood um, and you know running a line down through it and then and then maybe trying to push it a little bit and everything like that but I eventually got to the point where I realized I needed to to throw the piece in the general I'm going to call it an archetype or the, the kind of the, 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 the form that embraces what it is. And so I threw a form with a waist and then I put my, twi my, my alteration in it, which made it look twisted and um, found that, that that is what created a real look and change in, in the gesture of it. Okay, so I 
And now I don't have my, yeah, here I, I do. I got a makeup sponge. I'm, hi I'm having to hydrate it. Okay, we're there now. <laughs> it was it was about the size of a of a half dollar, and and that's how much bigger it gets from uh, hydrating it. So what I do now is I'll I'll support here on this on the inside of this curve, and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna just push out at the parts that that go down this this downward curve here. I push out, and then on the upward side. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold here and I'm going to push out here underneath it. And then back down. And I'm going to hold underneath it. And sometimes I'll, I'll actually push in and give it a, a really extra bump. And that, it's almost like a, like a twist is what it becomes. And then here on this long one, I can actually let the wheel move. And then once I get that all set up, I just kind of let my sponge follow that line. Okay, and so I don't worry about my lip at all right now because I'm gonna I'm gonna cut this lip. And so, and then I'm also I'll, I, I do the I do the foot as well and make it a little bit wavy. Um, so when I when I trim these, I'm going to um, I will trim them as wet as I possibly can. As, it, not as soon as I turn them over, but they'll be sticky and tacky when I go to trim them. Okay. a few more of those. an air bubble so I gotta take care of that where does it go there it is this is, this wheel is still not quite comfortable for me I uh, I brought I put it on a couple of two befores so it's raised three inches higher than what it has been when I've been throwing on it but it's still uh, very much, uh, still a little bit low. I feel a little bit like Quasimodo in, in my, I'd like to be sitting about uh, six inches higher and have the wheel about a, six inches higher than what it is. Okay, so if you notice, I'll, 
I, I make the top a lot whiter. Um, it's a whole lot, it just, it's easy to let the clay fly um, in this setup. And then what I'll do is I can then, because then I, I, this is pretty much finished now. And so when I come through this to put it where it needs to, I don't have to uh, throw here anymore. And, and then I don't have the torque that's going to make this one to set down because it, it goes out of ways. And uh, that setup allows me to put a pretty good um, angle on that, pretty aggressive angle without having to worry about losing it. This one's, this one's working out real good. And I almost have to pull up a little bit when I'm coming across it to keep it from wanting to settle. Putting a lot of, quite a bit of pressure on this. up the inside. Okay, so now I'm going to do one that is actually a the progression of this piece and but it looks so different it's crazy how different it looks it's just a little bit different uh, finish it doesn't drink as well so when you start to talk about function like a lot of these tea bowls are to me like when you were talking about you know is there a, a, a uh, yeah, the question was asked whether or not there's a consideration for, you know, holding to heat. And um, I feel like my tea bowls aren't very wide at the top relative to their size, and so they do pretty good. This one, however, will not. <laughs> this one is the antithesis of that concept. So I'm going to do the same kind of thing on this one, except my finish doesn't come back in, it goes out. So once again, this top is mostly finished where the bottom uh, is not yet. And But I have to do this one with a sponge, I can't really do it with the... Uh, with the uh, um, I'm going to get that waist a little bit better. There we go. I haven't made one of these in a long time. And then I basically just stretch this out like that. And you can see uh, it's even wanting to curve here. I'm going to lift a hair and push underneath that and support that a little better. Okay, and 
put a little water in that waste so my rib doesn't stick. And then the same, I do the same thing again. And I'm going to wait, I'm going to do all my up first. My curve, the, the curve that goes up. So this curve that goes up, where it goes like that, as opposed to like this, I'm pushing up underneath into that curve. And so here, there's another one. And I will push up and fill that out. And so then the ones that go down, I'm going to encourage that down a little bit. And, and these, the reason why I wait to do that is because it's so easy. It's already set up and it's doing it on its own basically. And so I got to be really careful how far I go. Sometimes I can get a crack in here um, from, that, from that clay bending back on itself. Now I can also, what I'll do is now that, I've, now that I've got all the, the torque and all the naughty things I'm doing to, you know, this thing, um, I'm, I'm going to give it just a little bit more outward gesture here. And then I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to come across the bottom. And I don't like to line everything up. I want it to be a little bit askew. So I'm going to go like that. So now we're starting to get another, we got, we got a wavy line, a wavy line, and a wavy line, all kind of just starting to, to go on top of each other. And then I can come back in here and just flow, right? Let that kind of bounce right on top of it. And I actually like these when they do sit down a little bit. And so when they don't, I got to kind of be a little mean to them and push them a hair. And there we go. And then I'll fill that out of here, down underneath. And I can get a little bit more out of this now that I've got that curve going. And when I when I trim these, I'll I'll dress them up a little bit more. But I got to get the I got to get the, the the line and the gesture put in there first. And then here you really gotta, I'll dress, I'll, I'll have to doctor this up again later too because they get pretty abused. But this, this right here at this, this plane, okay, of this, of this line, or I don't want to say it, plane is actually the best word. Um, it's facing me. And so, you know, sometimes the insides of pots get a little bit neglected. And, but the, that surface right there that's looking at me, it's got to look good. And so, um, I'm not going to, uh, I'm going to start that process of cleanup right now because it's easier. But anything that I got to do with any sort of force and kind of a little bit of scrubbing, I can't do right now or it's going to, it's going to fall down. So anyway, that's kind of a, to me, this is a really cool example of how ideas and, and uh, of things can progress over time. I,
I'm going to do one now that's has the same sort of shape that I love doing, but uh, nothing alike because it's it's uh, the lines are tight as opposed to loose. foot really has to be tight on this one it's got to really be down there and so I already screwed up I went a little bit too pulled a little too much right there at the bottom and hold on I don't know why my screen keeps going out so I think I'll be all right though okay something about this that I really I love the way it feels and but I got to get them close to being the same or it doesn't feel right to me <laughs> And I, I, when I first started making this, I didn't have this this line in the middle, but I really like. Whoa, okay. I really like. I like what it does. I feel like I'm having to throw upside down. I need a mirror. I got a mirror over there. It's working okay. And this needs to be a little more symmetrical too. Now this one, I will, I will glaze it with my ash glazes some of the time, not all of the time. I really like this in, in a single uh, matte glaze, something really bold that goes with the, uh, the, to me this is a very bold gesture and a bold, a bold, it carries that sort of look and feel in the world, I think. And so, um, trying to, Tighten up those lines just a little bit. Okay, so uh, my uh, my pewter glaze, which uh, is really dark, it's almost black. It's kind of I call it pewter because it looks like. Did I cut that off? I can't remember. I think I did. Um, it looks like pewter, and so um, a dark a dark pewter. Oh, poor connection. Let me see. End. Okay.